If you're serious about using Notion, then you need to be serious about security. Just imagine how bad it would be if your company workspace got deleted tomorrow just because of an unnecessary mistake. Here are 11 deadly Notion sins that you need to avoid at all cost. First, not setting up two-factor authentication. Please promise me two things. First, watch this video to the end so you don't accidentally make a crucial mistake. And second, immediately after this video is over, please head over to your Notion workspace and turn on 2FA. Emails can and do get hacked and if your attacker gets access to the Notion email, they get easily also access to your Notion workspace. So if you have a Notion account that you care about, you should always have two-factor authentication on. And when doing so, please opt for the authenticator method. SIM swaps are fairly common, so if you use the SIM authentication, that's better than nothing, but still, it's fairly easy to get like access to a SIM card and like intercept these SMS codes, so the only really secure way here is to use an authentificator app. Speaking of passwords, please don't store your password or any super sensitive data in Notion. It's not that Notion is per se unsafe, but just like you shouldn't store anything like that in a Google Drive doc or in just a Word document on your desktop, you shouldn't store these sort of things in Notion. Use a dedicated tool like one password or a similar password manager for these super sensitive things. So no passwords and no banking details in Notion, please. If you've ever been invited to another workspace, then you've probably seen the email that you get from Notion informing you and that you should click here to join the workspace. But that's actually not necessary. If you get invited, it will automatically show up in your dropdown in your account and you can just go to the other account from there. I don't think there are any ongoing phishing attacks currently with that method, but it is a potential attack vector, right? Someone could send you an email that looks like this simple Notion email and ask you to just click on this link and well, you know how it goes, it's usually a bad idea. So since it's not necessary to click on the link, let's just never click on these links and navigate directly from our workspace to there. Okay, let me just quickly... Ooh! If you're working in a team environment with Notion users of several skill levels, then this one is an absolute must. To avoid any user accidentally deleting your awesome Notion setup, make sure to lock all your public pages. This isn't a guarantee that people can't overwrite it because anyone with edit access can simply untoggle the lock feature, but it avoids these fat fingering mistakes where you accidentally select everything and then hit delete. To lock the page, simply click on the three dots in the top right corner and then on the lock page option. It is now indicated also with a small locked uh, icon up here that it's locked and now even if I wanted to, so you see I can't, uh, if I select everything and press delete, nothing actually happens. Similarly, you want to protect your well-structured databases so they don't go from looking nice like this to utter chaos like this. Again, this is a must-use setting if you work in a team environment. It's similar to locking a page, but not quite the same. Whenever you are on a database page, so important, the database needs to be opened as a full page, so not just inline, and then you go to the share settings, you see here that here with this guest, I can uh, change from full access to can edit content. And if you have the can edit content uh, active, then people will be still able to add things to the database, right? And they can drag cards around, but they will no longer be able to change your properties uh, or your views. So you have that locked in and you don't end up with a ton of properties that don't belong there. Honestly, keeping your Notion workspace up to date can be a daunting challenge. But in particular, if you're running your business in Notion, it's crucial that you do, which is why I created Notion Guardian. Notion Guardian is a 360 degree audit of your workspace that's designed to identify any potential risk, whether that's security and data risks, like the one highlighted in this video, project management shortfalls that are slowing your team down and creating unnecessary costs, or any knowledge management related mistakes so that you never lose an important document ever again. Plus, it happens completely asynchronous and requires only 15 minutes of your time for the initial setup so that you don't have to drop your day-to-day -day operations and can focus on what actually matters. So, if you're running a business in Notion and want to make sure that your Notion workspace isn't turning into an existential risk for your company, make sure to check out the link in the description. Now, back to the fun list of things that can easily ruin your day in Notion. Next up, system-wide access for malicious extensions or APIs. You know that I'm a big fan of automations and external tools to really push Notion to the limits. They can do awesome things like getting charts into Notion or building an AI-powered email assistant. But you should always make sure to limit the access of that external tool because you never know when something might be going wrong. So never give any extensions system-wide access to your workspace. 
Instead, when you go through the whole onboarding experience, right, when you select, okay, do you want to give X access to your Notion workspace? And then you get to select the pages. Make always sure to only select the individual pages that the extension needs access to, and don't just give a blanket access to your whole workspace. And ever so often, just go to your settings and check which extensions are actually active and which ones you don't need anymore, so you can remove those immediately. So far, we mostly talked about external risks to your Notion workspace, but experience shows the biggest risk typically sits in front of the computer. Wait, is he talking about me? Let's take buttons, for example. They're an amazing feature, but they have one really big risk hidden inside of them, the dreaded edit pages in databases feature. So we have our nice little doomsday button up here, and I mean, what's the worst that could happen if we click it, just hit it, and oh, all of a sudden, all our task names are gone, and we have this weird status in here. Now, let's look at the setup. The problem is this pages to edit, and by default, it will edit all pages. So that means if someone creates a button and they want to change something, right, maybe they want to set the name to something else, right, to, I don't know what, uh, or in this even worst case, right, they just replace it with a blank name, and they edit some other properties, and then they don't specify which pages to edit uh, in the database, it will apply it to everything. And imagine how bad it is if you have a company uh, workspace where you have, you know, one database for all your tasks, and then someone accidentally overwrites all tasks at once. That's why really make sure that uh, a, people who know a bit about Notion uh, create these buttons, and that whenever you use this uh, pages to edit feature with buttons, uh, always make sure to set like granular filters and uh, check it maybe in a separate database first that it actually does what you expect it to do. Similar to buttons, Notion's new database automations are also super amazing. But make sure that you always, always double check how an automation works in a separate secure environment before you let it loose on your company data. Similar risk as with buttons also here, the edit pages in databases feature. Another innocent looking setup with our very important sample data, but now look what happens if I add anything to this. Uh, so what happened, question mark, and then we wait a second for the important, oh, automations run and everything is gone. Now the risk here is again hidden inside automations and then if you look at the automation, it is again the update pages in option, right? So I can quickly remove this one. Um, let's delete it and let's look at uh, how the issue can occur. So if you add an action and we say edit pages in, we pick our database and then by default we say we, once anything is added to this database, right, we will update everything that matches all pages. There's no filter set right now, which means we will overwrite all the data. And that is very bad. In particular, if we now uh, add like the name property and by default it is set to untitled. So it will just override what is in there. So it's not set to, you know, <laughs> nothing. And if there's something already in it, it just doesn't do anything. No, it will override everything. And that's why we need to be so careful here. Even uh, if we hit a command Z, right? Like you see, uh, it doesn't uh, return like our data here. It doesn't like uh, re reinstate it. We hope that like in, in the future, uh, that by, with buttons you can do that, right? With buttons you can just reverse the effect, but with automations you currently can't, which means they're even more dangerous. So please always test it in a secure environment first. Okay, now today we talked about a lot of ways how you can prevent something bad from happening. But what if it does? Luckily, Notion has a built-in page history feature. So even if something catastrophical happens to your Notion workspace, not all hope is lost. But you need to know how to actually roll back any of these changes. This very crucial feature is hidden behind the clock symbol at the top right corner. You can click on it and then you can see everything that happened to this page. So if I say, okay, 10 minutes ago, everything was still all right, I can click on the clock symbol and I can now go jump into the more granular versions of this page. It takes a second usually to load and now I see really uh, by the minute every update that I did. So let's say at 8.17 everything was still all right and I can look at my page here. Uh, I can even, oh, okay, it's already gone here so we need to go back further. But what we, I can even do is I can um, highlight parts of this page. Like so I, if there's an, just an individual block that I messed up, I can highlight that and then I can click out of it and I can paste it on the page and I will create a copy of it. So that's also one way to restore parts of the data, right? If you don't need to roll it back completely. But if you need to roll it back, oops, completely, not this change, then we can go in here, pick our version today at 8.13 and then we can say restore version and that will then uh, also like pick the databases to make sure that everything uh, gets uh, pulled back and then we restore the initial version and have everything that we had previously back. Now, how far you can go back, so as you can see, now everything is good again. How far you can back will depend on your plan. So the higher your plan, the further your page history goes back. And 
bonus tip. If you delete a page by accident, what you can also do is you can uh, navigate to your workspace options and then to the trash. And in the trash, you will find all the pages that you uh, deleted in your workspace and you can uh, look at them so you can just pull them up uh, they will be stored for quite a while. Uh, you see in the top this like banner that this page is currently deleted and you can simply restore this individual page and bring it back to where it was. Next up, user groups. If you're building a Notion workspace for a company, then you need to define user groups and access rights in order to have a smooth and scalable workspace. Please don't start adding people manually to pages or team spaces where they belong to. Instead, take the time and write out the different user groups and their rights uh, once on paper or in a separate Notion doc and then create these groups in Notion. That way you can easily add bulk, add people or remove them from a specific group or from a specific team space. What is one of Notion's biggest weaknesses right now? The lack of truly partial database views. Currently, it's impossible to reliably and securely share a specific subset of a database. Here's what I mean and why exactly it's an issue. Here we have a pretty common scenario. We have a database that contains a lot of information and some of it is confidential. So for example, let's say we have a bunch of clients and we have here in our task database a lot of tasks for these clients, but we only want to see the specific client to see their tasks and not everyone's tasks. Now, you would think that you could simply go into your client portal and create a link database and then filter it to only show the tasks for that client. But I've done this and I shared this page and now you see what happens. The client on her page sees nothing because they don't have access to the database. And if they don't have access to the database, they will not see a linked view of it. So what I would need to do is I would need to go back to the company and I would go in here and I would need to say, okay, please also, I would need to also publish this database. It has the same share setting. So either uh, I need to invite the same person to it or I need to publish it to the web. So I quickly do this. Oops, we don't want to view the site actually. Uh, and then we go back to our client portal and we refresh it. And now all of a sudden the database is here. So now we can access it. But as you can see, I can now also click into the secret database and see all the data, not just the one that was shared with me. Now, of course, you could think, okay, well, I will just hide uh, this here, right? I mean, they, they don't need to see that. So I go in my client portal and then I say, okay, please hide the database title. But still, if you do this, let's just refresh it quickly. Um, people, oops, it uh, takes a second to reflect here. But even if that is gone, right, people can still open the, uh, the individual entry open it as a full page and then via the breadcrumbs navigate back to the original database. So that doesn't work either. And even if you take it one step further and set an impossible filter on this database where you know everything that you see on here is uh, hidden and you can't uh, access it, then people could still export the whole database and still that way get access to information. So the TLDR is as long as you have data, data in a database and you want someone to give access to it, you probably need to share the whole database with them and risk exposing all the data unless you want to go on an individual basis and instead of sharing the database, just share the individual pages, which at scale isn't really feasible. So what does it mean for you? Well, if you have truly sensitive information that under no circumstances can be shared with someone who should have partial access to something, then you need to create separate databases. Luckily, there's a way to actually hook them up and sync them. And I've written a dedicated walkthrough with all the details over here. So just click here and I'll see you in a few seconds.